What's up, everybody? Joe here. Welcome back to Taste Like Music. I'm alone again. Naturally, that's fine because uh, it's the perfect record to be alone to. Talking about Neil Young's archival release of Chrome Dreams, the legendary shelved album. It was supposed to be his eighth studio album, a follow-up to the lively Zuma in 1976. Chrome Dreams has a bit of reputation, widely bootlegged on acetate after Young shelved the project. So it's available. It's filled with songs that you've probably heard before on other albums. Uh, Some of it made its way to American Stars and Bars, Rust Never Sleeps, Comes a Time, Hawks and Doves, Freedom, even all the way to 1993 and Unplugged. Uh, Though you probably remember most of these songs from Rust Never Sleeps and American Stars and Bars, where the most famous songs ended up in slightly different arrangements. 1977, Neil Young plays the album for his neighbor, Carol King, who kind of laughs at it and says that it wasn't a real album. I don't know if that was the final nail in the coffin, excuse me, coffin, but nevertheless, Neil shelled the project. Uh, He would go on to release American Stars and Bars that year. He just kept releasing albums. It didn't didn't matter to, to Neil. He was full of material. Here, 2023, it finally gets a proper release, and we're here to talk about it because it kind of has changed my entire perception of Neil Young from this period. I'm a big American Stars and Bars fan. Had it about four and a half stars. I think it's great. Uh, I love the country rock, folky stuff of the first half, the harder edged uh, second half with like Hurricane. Here, I think with Chrome Dreams, we have a better representation of what Neil was going through at the time. And uh, maybe it's just because I'm not the biggest Rest Never Sleeps fan. Improved versions of songs that kind of just didn't do it for me. Uh, I think I was roundly criticized for feeling a little bit ambivalent towards uh, songs like Pocahontas and Powderfinger. Well, I've, I've changed my tune on Chrome Dreams it's an entirely different experience. These songs, what Neil was doing, uh, the album opens with Pocahontas, which would show up on Rest Never Sleeps, more fleshed out. There's a 12 string guitar, there's backing vocals, kind of spacey sound effects. Here it's Neil at his most contemplative, very stripped down, just him and acoustic guitar. The emphasis on Neil's quivering vocals, his simple but tasteful guitar playing, And it it has a whole different feel, a whole different meaning when it's stripped down to just Neil. And I I prefer it over Russ's busy version. And that's sort of the kicker here is if you really want to feel Neil and what he was feeling at this time, this is the album to go to. It's, you know, somewhat like Homegrown, his other shelved legendary album from the 70s, which came out a couple of years ago. It feels very personal. It feels like it's just you and Neil in a room together. And he's just playing his heart out, singing his heart out. Track two, The Will to Love. Beautiful song about a salmon uh, swimming upstream and finding a mate. And one of his weirder, weirder songs. But it's, it's a magnificent tune. The lyrics are very vivid. Here, it remains mostly how it was on American Stars and Bars. But it definitely fits the mood here better. It's a, it's a real slow builder. He's playing it in front of his fireplace. You can hear the crackles and noise going on in the background from the burning fire. It's got a little bit of that hazy psychedelic swirl. It's odd. It's not something you hear um, from big artists like Neil Young. But another one that really fits that very stripped down solo, just you and Neil kind of mood. Uh, Star of Bethlehem, a little livelier. Still, just the essentials, acoustic guitar. Emmy Lou Harris on backing vocals. Side note, she's one of the greatest backing vocalists ever. A little harmonica. This isn't Zuma, or this isn't, you know, this isn't Harvest. This isn't American Stars and Bars. Very much fits the mood. Then comes Like a Hurricane, and it totally thrashes the mood, but in a, in a good way. It's got that ramshackle, messy guitar heroics, got the, the backing organ. It's, it's a full band. It's the full Neil Young Crazy Horse experience for the most part. 
It was a masterpiece when it came out in Stars and Bars. It's still a masterpiece here. And despite taking you out of that intimate you and Neil kind of mood, it, it works in, in this in this album. I think it's a, a nice respite from that intimate strip down. You know, you get you get the heroics, you get Neil as rocker, and it, it works. Uh, it would work anywhere, let's, let's be honest. Uh, Back to the Quiet after that was Too Far Gone, which didn't show up until 1989's Freedom. Hold Back the Tears follows that. Neil, just sweet singing, a higher register. He's playing all the instruments. Uh, and it feels very insular, very much Neil alone with his thoughts. Feels like you're kind of getting inside his brain a little bit, a little too personal, maybe. Homegrown, a little bit more of a stomper. You got Crazy Horse coming in. Captain Kennedy after that, stripped down, just Neil. Sedan Delivery, back to the full band. You get Crazy Horse. Appears in a faster, a little fuller version on Rust Never Sleeps. Uh, and then I think the piece de resistance, uh, which is naked version, we'll call it a powder finger, which was originally given to Ronnie Van Zant and Leonard Skinner to record. They never did because of the tragedy. The plane crash, Ronnie was killed. Here, it is one of the most heartbreaking uh, songs I think I've ever heard. And I just didn't get that on Rust Never Sleeps. I, I didn't feel the songwriting and the lyrics because of the, the larger backing uh, the more guitar oriented style. Uh, it, it's almost too cheerful sounding on Rest Never Sleeps. You get the fleshed out uh, guitar and the, the bigger sound, you know, closer to how you would think Leonard Skinner would do it. There's a, you know, a little meandering guitar solo right in the heart of the song, right when you get to the, the powerful uh, resolution. Here, Neil is isolated. He's lonesome. He's, you know, he is the song's narrator, just alone in the world. Uh, it's so powerful. It completely changed my thoughts on this song. Some of the most vivid lyrics he wrote. And I absolutely love it now. I think it's just a complete masterpiece. And that was lost on me in the Rest Never Sleeps version. I, I didn't get it. Now I freaking get it. Powderfinger, incredible. And uh, album ends, Look Out For My Love, which, you know, perfect kind of finish a fin on the album it does seem like uh, i've seen mixed reviews uh, everyone seems to love it but a lot of people prefer the rest never sleeps versions people like jason really love american stars and bars is this the proper version of these songs is this how they were supposed to be i think it is i think the lonesome expression of neil on this album is the truest it's how he was in 1977. And, you know, it, it's simple. It's unadorned. And these songs just have so much power and meaning with less. More is less. Less is more on this album. Uh, and it's just a perfect revealing showcase of just how good Neil Young was. I'm a huge Gold Rush fan. Five stars. Album of the year 1970. I love Harvest. Top five. 72. Five stars. After that, he never quite gets back to those highs. This this is another five-star album for me. This would be Neil getting back to the five-star, just a full-blown masterpiece in 1977. Lyrically, uh, performance-wise, it's it's perfect. If we were counting Chrome Dreams as it came out in 1977, pretend all this other stuff never happened, I would say his third best album ever, despite my love of American Stars and Bars and Come to Time. I think this is a superior collection of songs, superior performance of the songs. It's Neil to strip down best, some of his best ever story songs. And he's still not afraid to go nuclear with like a hurricane. So you get the best of all worlds. Uh, the downside, you, you get a weaker rest never sleeps, a weaker uh, comes a time. But for me, that trade-off very reasonable for an album of import like Chrome Dreams as it was in 1977. So there you have it. Chrome Dreams, legendary 1977 album by Neil Young for all to hear. Unless you have Spotify, then you're screwed. But for you title listeners and you Amazon and, and everybody else, what did you think of Chrome Dreams? Where would it land for you? Is it, you know, five stars? Is it four stars? Do you prefer the other versions of the songs that would appear on other albums? 
leave your thoughts in the comments, like this video, subscribe to this channel, check us out on social media, become a patron of this channel, help us out, you know, give us some, give us some of your hard earned green, throw it our way. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you again here on Taste Like Music.